the truth that I had to come to grips with, that I wasn't in charge of my destiny. The truth was that I wasn't giving all that I had. The truth was that there are some things that I wanted to do, but I didn't have the courage to act on those things. And the truth was that Bert Childs was a blessing to me. He made life so miserable for me, I had to start looking at my life differently. I started going to work earlier. I started being the last one to leave there. I started working harder than anybody else. The other guys could not. Why would you work so hard, Les? I said, I'm not working for them. I have been cheating, Bert, I thought. I've been cheating myself and my family. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. All right? It is easy to be negative today. It is easy to have low morale today. I was at a corporation and they're, they're going through downsizing and going to lay off some 1,500 people over the next few weeks. It's very depressing there. And those people that stay there nine times out of ten, they're just going to do just enough to keep from getting fired. Anybody can do that. But if you can begin to harness yourself and say that where I am, I'm going to do the best I can with what I got because that is an expression of who I am. If you get into the habit of just being mediocre, it will become a part of your consciousness. If you get in the habit of giving less than what you have it within you to give, it will begin to reflect itself in your personality. It will begin to damage you psychologically. And you don't want to be a part of that kind of self-destructive behavior. And so you want to set some high standards for yourself. The next thing, part of what feeds that hunger, you've got to develop a sense of urgency. Aurelia said, stop living your life like you have a thousand years to live. In life, you're either here today and you're gone today. If there's something that you want to do and you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. I like what Robert Shuler says. He said, by the yard, it's hard, but inch by inch, anything is a cinch. <laughs> just a little bit of it. A friend of mine, Bobby Kerr, used to be a roommate. Bobby wanted to go into the area of public relations. He loved working with the public. Young lady he wanted to marry named Clarice. Bobby was a great procrastinator. Pretty soon the job where Bobby worked, they transferred him to another location. He went out to celebrate with the people on that new job site. And Bobby suffered a massive heart attack and died. Bobby didn't drink and didn't smoke, was under 40, and he died. Ask your question, how much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? When you start thinking about that, we don't know. We don't know. Bobby took all the greatness and all of the talent and all of his abilities to his grave with him. Good morning. One of the things he could have put in parenthesis under his name, he didn't use all his stuff. And most of, most of us do that. Most of us don't use the stuff that we have brought into the universe. And we want to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to start living life with a sense of urgency and using what we've got. Using ourselves up. Sharing what we brought into the universe to share. Because if we don't, nobody else will. Stop wasting valuable time. Knowing that if we begin to live our lives as if each day were our last, our lives will take on, take on a whole new meaning. They take on a whole new expression. Valuing each moment that we are blessed with. The next thing that begins to nurture that hunger, honor yourself as your word. Don't give your word out lightly. When you throw your word out there and you don't honor it, it makes a statement about you. If you decide to maintain a sense of integrity with yourself, that if I speak it, I'm going to live it. It's who I am. And I'm going to be very cautious in how I give my word to others, and most of all with the commitments 
that I make to myself because I want my life to reflect my words and honoring who I am and what I express. Another challenging area in terms of nurturing and developing that hunger in yourself is learning the art of becoming single-minded. Learning how to concentrate. Learning how to focus in. And you'll be surprised at the things that you're able to do. When you learn how to block things out, when you learn how to keep that eye single, you'll be surprised at the ideas that will come to you of the people that you'll be able to attract, of the opportunities that you'll be able to see. You begin to see things that have been standing there looking you in the face saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. Here's a habit that I do. Maybe it might be of some value to you. I get up in the morning and I start writing what great ideas that I can think of today that can improve me and that will enable me to reach my goal. And I just let my mind flow. Sometimes I write 15, 20 ideas. Some days it's more difficult than others. One idea can change your life. One idea can turn your life around. Deciding that you're going to focus to develop your skills. The guy was, was um, the new owner of a team. A team, a baseball team that was in the basement of the league when he took it over. He went to the pitcher and he said, what is your best throw? And he said, well, I got a good curveball and I've got a good fastball. And he went on talking about his different throws. He said, but tell me this, what is your best throw? He thought for a moment. He said, I've got a good fastball. He said, that's all I want you to work on. Nothing else. Just develop your fastball. The next year, they went to the World Series. Most people don't know where their fastball is. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places if you develop your gifts. Most of us don't like to do those things that come easy to us. I've always loved to talk to people. I decided taking this advice to develop my skills as a speaker and my gift has developed and it developed and has taken me many places. You have something that you brought to the universe and that if you decide that my life deserves my developing this what I do well and becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me if you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts, I grant you, you'll never ever be without. I grant you that your gifts will take you places that will literally amaze you. I grant you that if you begin to work to develop your gifts, you'll develop a strong sense of happiness. You'll get a larger vision of yourself because part of beginning to get a larger vision of yourself, all of us need some area of our lives where we can have a feeling of competence. That people know when they think about this area, that's something you do. That you eat and sleep that. And that you do that. You do that. And people know it. And you know it. And you know that you know that you know this. If you don't know anything else, you know this. Can you tell I know I know what I'm doing? Oh, uh, hello. <laughs> you know this. So you've got to work on it. When other folk are having a good time, you've got to have the, the strength of character to concentrate, to read, to digest information. If you decide any particular area that you're concerned about to make a conscious, deliberate, determined effort to read one book a month in that area, in five years you'll be among the top 5% experts in the world. I read a minimum of two books a week. The average American reads only one book a year. If you decide that area that you love, that you are going to master that particular area, in this era of accelerated change, overwhelming complexity, and tremendous competition, as you begin to develop and expand your skills and your talents and your vision of yourself, you will always be in control of your destiny.
The next thing is whatever it is that you want to do. You want to do it massively. I have a friend who was telling me that his sales were down. I said, well, how many phone calls you make a day? He said, 25. I said, double them. Make 50 or 75 or 100. He said, oh, man, that's just too much. Said, what do you mean too much? You behind on your bills? You talking about too much? You know one way to get back on your feet real quick is to miss two car payments? <laughs> talking about your time? There's no competition out here. Decide that you're going to push yourself. Most people won't do that. Most people give up on themselves easily. You know the human spirit is powerful? There's nothing as powerful. It's hard to kill the human spirit. They asked Benjamin Disraeli, a man who became the head of a country at a time when Jews were not allowed out after 10 o'clock. He said, how did you do it? How do you achieve against such great odds? He said, nothing can resist the will of a people that will stake even their existence on the extent of their purpose for good.